This is a patient with a history of pancreatic mass for which an MRI was obtained for further evaluation. I'm just going to show you the axial T2 fats added images. We'll ignore some of the incidental findings, such as the liver cyst that we just saw there, and just focus on the pancreas itself. As we look at the pancreas, we'll see that there are numerous cystic masses throughout the pancreas. Let's just focus on the largest one over here. We can see that the largest pancreatic mass is located in the tail, and its morphology is such that it has these lobulated borders. If you have your finger and sort of go around the outer contour, it's very lumpy bumpy on the outside of it. It also looks like it's made up of a cluster of smaller cysts within it. In this case, there's no clear communication with the pancreatic duct, which, if you can see it, looks within normal limits in size. And there are numerous other uh, pancreatic cystic masses over there. They look a little bit more simple, rounded in their appearance, and certainly a lot smaller. So whenever we see a pancreatic mass with lobulated margins, looks like it's composed of multiple smaller cluster of cysts, one of the things you need to think about is the possibility of a serous cyst adenoma. Now, despite the morphology being a good look for a serous cyst adenoma. One needs to do an endoscopic ultrasound for cyst sampling to confirm this. This was confirmed to be a serous cyst adenoma on endoscopic ultrasound, and luckily these are benign lesions. And so once we confirm the diagnosis of serous cyst adenoma, we can often just ignore these. Certainly if they get larger, around four centimeters or more, some people advocate at least monitoring them or perhaps taking them out as they can cause mass effect and cause some sort of uh, symptoms related to that. But in terms of malignant potential, it's something we don't need to worry about.